Welcome to this edition of Motor Trend. I'm Jim Scouton, and these two wonders are the baddest Fords you can buy. They're the newest pair to spring from the mind of Steve Celine. How's it going guys, Bradley here, and today we're doing a little bit of tuning adjustment to try and get the speedometer reading right here on the Mustang. So let me kind of show you what's going on here while this is flashing here in the background. So one of the biggest problems with this car um, is that this transmission that's in here is a 96 uh, GT transmission. And so between 96 and 98 and then 99 and on, you had a different system for the uh, speed sensor and the way that the signal is sent to the car. On the 96 to 98, the speed sensor sends the signal directly up to the speedometer. Whereas on the 99s uh, and newer, uh, the speed sensor is sent from, or the signal from the speed sensor down here is sent over to the ECU and then up to the, uh, the dash. Well, the problem that you have here is that the VSS uses a, uh, well, both systems use uh, a like a magnetic pulse, and the VSS system's uh, pulse, when they're correct, should be pulsing 8,000 pulses per mile, whereas on the OSS systems, they run about 32,000, um, and so it's a lot more sensitive, and it, it is a lot more correct. Um, so basically what I'm having to do here is we did some math to basically... Uh, figure out how to get um, close enough uh, to speed. So there's this great document here from Accutac that is basically discussing the differences between the systems, how they work, how to convert them, uh, how to make everything work with each other. And it's actually really cool, it's really helpful. There's a lot of math to, to be done and I'm terrible at math, uh, but we're getting pretty close, and I'm thinking right now that the only reason that my Speedo is reading about 10 off at the moment uh, was that my tire size, I believe, was wrong. Everywhere online said that 285, uh, or uh, one place I read that I've relied on before said that 285, uh, 3519s are 775 uh, tire revs per mile, whereas uh, everywhere else that I've looked has said 750. So we just flashed the car to 750 instead, and we're gonna see if that makes a difference. Uh, hopefully it does, maybe that's it, and uh, we'll, we'll start reading correctly. Uh, I set my rear end ratio to 303, which is a number I got from doing this kind of equation here. Uh, and I'll put both of these documents down in the description just to, to kind of look. This is one that I wrote myself. It's not 100% correct, uh, I don't think, um, just because uh, I've changed some information and haven't gone back to rewrite it. But this one here from Accutac is definitely uh, a reliable source of information. This is pretty much how I've uh, learned. And, and, and this is where my source for trying to get this pretty dialed in has uh, come from. So right now we're doing about 29, 30 through here in the neighborhood. Uh, and yes, that is the speed limit, so don't worry. And uh, we're still getting only about 10 miles uh, under. So I'm not really sure what's going on. That's with the uh, tire, uh, that is with the, the, the tire size set to 750 instead of 775. So there might be something more that I need to be looking into. Uh, this is a 327 uh, gear car. Uh, it is still the stock ratio. And the reason that the, uh, the rear end in the computer is told, it, it's being told it's a 303 is because that was the that was a number that I came up with after doing some math based off of this rear end ratio. So uh, maybe I need to go back and adjust it a little bit more. We're gonna see if that's uh, what needs to be done because uh, it's still clearly not reading correct, and uh, I'm not really sure what what else it could be. So um, we'll go back to the house real fast and see uh, why it's still reading wrong. Uh, I really do think it's going to be that rear end ratio that we just need to keep fiddle farting with. Um, so we'll go ahead and make it a little bit more sensitive. We'll probably turn it up a little bit uh, or turn the now, give, give it a lower value of like a higher rear end gear. Uh, and uh, we'll see 
if that does something. I've been doing some more reading and going back and looking here at this document. It will be linked down below if you're trying to do a similar thing like I've done. And it also covers putting uh, OSS transmissions into VSS cars, uh, like your T56s in uh, SN95 cars or even newer T45s or TR3650s or anything like that. They talk about that as well. Um, so scrolling back down into here, and to the VSS to OSS conversion. Uh, been kind of going back through and reading this and processing this information more. And uh, basically, I, what I've come to the conclusion of is I know that the speedometer read correctly in the car that this transmission came out of. And I know that it had a 23 tooth, uh, which is a non-OEM gear in the transmission. Um, which means that I need to figure out what the range uh, or what the what the uh, the drive gear in the speedometer itself, which could be six, seven, or eight. I need to figure out what that was, but I'm not sure what that was because that car has been parted out. It's long gone. So what I need to do instead is they also linked up this uh, uh, VSS calculator, and I know that the rear end uh, that this car had was a 373, and I know that the gear was a 23 as well. And so what I need to find out right now is what the tire revs per mile was. And so I need to figure out what tire size that old car had. And then basically I'll, by choosing either six, seven, or eight, I should see this VSS pulses per mile value right here in the blue. I should see that turn to 8,000 or pretty close to it. And if it shows up as 8,000, well then that means that it confirms that it was reading correctly. And then I need to go back and do my math on something else. Uh, and, and, and the big thing that we're going to have to figure out is what this number is. If it's not eight, then my entire math has been off this entire time. Uh, and, and it would explain why I'm close. Uh, because what we're going to have to do here is we're, we're dividing these two, the eight and the 23, into each other. Uh, and we're getting the closest number that we can get uh, uh, between two, three, and four, which would be the VSS pulses. Uh, per revolution on the trans on the output shaft and uh, basically you know this number here is the the uh, it's eight because all of these have an eight tooth reluctor wheel inside the VSS uh, so it would be eight times and then in parentheses the speedo drive gear which could be six seven or eight uh, or the speedo driven gear which we know is 23 and you'll see here that there's a range between uh, 2.087 and 3.556 and mine came out to uh, 2.783. Well, the problem is, is HP Tuners doesn't let me put that in. It has to be an integer. Uh, it has to be two, three, or four. So I just need to figure that out. I'm trying to look through Instagram and see if I can't find pictures of this car and find out what tire size it is. And then I can just pull it up on the internet and see what, uh, what the revs per mile is for that tire. And I'll put it in here and we'll go from there. But that's pretty much where I'm at at the moment. So I'm gonna go keep looking for uh, the tire size of that car, and then we'll plug it into this calculator and see what we get. So just talked with the previous owner and got the tire size, did the math, and confirmed that this uh, three for the VSS pulses per rev on the transmission is gonna be the correct number to go with. So it does look like at this point, we're just gonna be messing around with the, the, the rear end ratio until it's right or until it's close enough. Um, so that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to go ahead and pop the hood, throw the car on the charger real fast, uh, flash it, and then we'll go for another drive again. I dropped it considerably down to 273. Uh, we're going to see if that gets us uh, close. Um, we need to go up. Uh, this might put us a little bit too far. If that's the case, then we know we need to go back down a little bit. Um, like I said, this is not going to be perfect. It's just going to be close enough um, to where we can get by and not be like, going you know 50 60 miles an hour and the car is saying it's only going 30 you know if it's close enough uh i'm hoping it'll be within five miles an hour that that would be pretty good um so we're gonna go ahead and flash the car and uh, after that we'll go take it for another drive around the neighborhood just got back from another test drive this time i set the final drive ratio to two to one i figured it was a pretty major change we would see what would happen and funny enough it actually read within about two to five miles, depending on where it was, two to five miles uh, off, uh, slightly ahead 
of uh, my GPS speed, which I had GPS on Waze and GPS on another app just to confirm. And uh, everything seems to be a lot happier now. Up with, I came up with about six from doing different equations or different values in the equations was 227, which is pretty close to the two to one that I had just tested with. So I'm thinking 227 is probably gonna be the number that I'm gonna go with. Uh, I'm gonna flash it to the car and we'll test it and see what's going on. Just made one final adjustment. Uh, 227 was slightly too high of a number, but two was slightly too low. So I split it right down the middle at 2.13 and we are going, uh, based on the computer says, about 30, and uh, here we are at 31, 32, so, so it's, it's seriously within about maybe a mile at most. It is really dead close. This is probably just as close as it is factory, in all honesty, so we are looking pretty, pretty good so far. I'm going to probably stick with 213. We'll take it up uh, and down the road a little bit faster speed outside the neighborhood, get to about 50 and see how it is. But so far it's looking pretty dialed. I think this is really the last change that this thing needed to be done correctly. And, uh, and it looks good. It's just taking some time certainly, but man, it is so nice to actually have uh, the speedometer working, you know, something that should be working. This definitely proves that you can put uh, a VSS based trans into an OSS car and get it working. It is not hard. You just have to take the time to do it right. I will say me going and picking up my own MPVI2 certainly helped and saved me uh, some time from having to go down to uh, uh, Bunnell to get the car tuned uh, and having to do this problem solving there where I'm just able to do it at my house, uh, you know, flash the car uh, myself and uh, be on the road and do my own testing. So this really, really helps out and uh, the price I got it for was totally worth it. We're doing 50 here outside the neighborhood and we're dead on there on Waze and pretty dead on here on the digital readout. So we're looking, looking good. Everything seems to be pretty much dialed in, which is fantastic. If you have a 96 through 98 transmission in your 99 or newer car, go ahead and take a look at these settings. I've already got it figured out for you if you have 327 years. If you have something a little bit different, maybe you have 373s or 410s, you'll have to play with that rear end ratio a little bit to get it more dialed in. But this is basically where I'm at. So automatic is set to disabled. This is important. If you had a automatic car, mine at one point was, now it's not. Uh, we disabled that. Everything here in the manual is set to the gear ratios of the transmission. Whether or not that actually matters, I don't think it does because there's no electronics on the uh, shifter area uh, to actually tell the ECU what's gear, what gear it's actually in. I'm pretty sure the only electronics on that whole transmission are the reverse lights and that's about it. Um, moving out of here, we'll go over to the Speedo. Uh, use VID is disabled. It needs to be disabled so it doesn't use the uh, VID block, which basically is uh, a, a block in the actual ECU with the stock tire size and with the stock ratio and all that. You have to disable that so HP tuners or even SCT uh, will overwrite that or basically bypass that. For the VSS pulses per rev on the transmission, it's set to three. Uh, for the final drive ratio for 327s, I set it to 2.13. Uh, their tire rev is going to depend on the size of your actual tire. Uh, that's uh, This is set for mine, but uh, the ratio is what is really important. Other than that, uh, you don't really need to change anything else. I will note that if you have 410s or have uh, 373s, uh, for mine, with it being uh, two, uh, 327, I found that uh, in the middle, dead in the middle between uh, 1 to 1 and 327 to 1 is uh, 213. So you might find that when you're doing 373s or 410s that you just need to find that middle number, that median number, and put that in, and it might work. I'm not sure if it's going to translate exactly the same, but that's what happened for me. So that's a settings wise what you would need to do if you are copying this same setup. And real quick, just wanted to throw this in at the end of the video. This is kind of an ask for help here, but I'm working on the idle now and I'm trying to learn how all this really works still. And basically the uh, transmission set point here for park neutral 
uh, 700 RPM is essentially what the car is what I'm asking the car to run at and it's not running that low It's running way higher. Uh, I've checked my throttle position. It's exactly where it should be. The screws not adjusted um, But it seems like my idle air control valve, which is a brand new motorcraft part uh, is Kind of all over the place. It can't decide what it wants to do um, so when the AC is on, the car probably idles about 1100 uh, and occasionally will blip up to like 13. Um, with it off, the car is idling at about 1500 uh, with an occasional blip to like 17. It's just, it's pretty ridiculous. I, I've checked for vacuum leaks. I've checked for all sorts of uh, other things. Uh, like I said, uh, being the idle screw, checking the TPS uh, values, those are good. The voltage is where it's supposed to be, it's in spec. So I really am not sure what's causing it, except for something in the tune that I just don't know, know about. Um, if I drop the park neutral uh, RPM to like 500, the car will idle lower, but it's commanding such a low speed that the, the car starts up pretty rough uh, with it that way. Um, especially warm start, cold start, not really a big deal, but um, warm, uh, warm start, it does. Uh, and I don't really feel like that's the proper solution of just setting this park neutral uh, idle uh, target speed that low. I don't really see that as the proper solution. Uh, that just seems like putting a Band-Aid on it. So if anybody knows uh, anything about that, you can maybe send me a DM on Instagram or uh leave a comment down below. I'd really appreciate it. But thank you for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed and I will see you guys in the next one.